For those of you with type 1 neurofibromatosis, have you ever wondered if you were a candidate for surgery? Specifically, we're talking about the tumors that typically form on the skin, sometimes by the hundreds. These tumors can be quite troubling on many levels. In some ways, it is the hallmark of NF1 that is so recognizable to those with and without the condition. Luckily, there is a treatment to help with these tumors. My name is Dr. Andre Panosian, and I am a board-certified plastic surgeon practicing in Los Angeles, California. As a specialist in the treatment of neurofibromatosis, I often perform a procedure known more widely as electrodesiccation. What is it? Stick with me and I will introduce you to this very powerful technique for tumor destruction as it applies to neurofibromatosis. But before we jump in, make sure to subscribe to this channel and hit that thumbs up and bell icon to continue getting the most current information and honest commentary on the latest procedures in plastic surgery. Previously, we discussed when to seek surgical intervention for neurofibromatosis. I will leave that link in the description below in case you haven't watched that video. For many people with type 1 neurofibromatosis, skin tumors can develop over time. In many cases, these tumors can continue to grow with new tumors cropping up as well. Aside from the appearance of the tumors, they can produce some symptoms of pain and itching. Sometimes there will be shock-like sensations, pins and needles, or even burning sensation. Itching is also a common complaint described by most patients. This is usually due to the tumors occasionally releasing histamine into the circulation. These symptoms can be aggravated potentially by hormonal influences and possibly by some form of repetitive trauma, but there is no clear trigger to the growth of tumors. Strong hormonal fluctuations, such as those that occurred during puberty or pregnancy, have been reported to cause an increase in tumor formation, but there have been no definitive studies to confirm these associations. It is difficult to distinguish which patients might experience rapid growth of tumors versus those that don't and have relatively few tumors over a lifetime. The typical trajectory is that patients might begin to see small bumps in their late teens to early 20s, which continue to proliferate. There does seem to be a general trend toward having larger and more tumors over time. Symptoms of skin NF tumors can also get worse with time, combined with the difficulty of concealing them. We cannot underestimate the psychological impact that this has on patients with NF1. So having an effective treatment to not only address the symptoms that come with the large number of skin tumors, but one that will reduce their total number can have a great impact on the comfort and quality of life of NF1 patients. Electrodesiccation is a procedure that can reduce the amount of tumors that are present, but what is it exactly? Electrodesiccation is the rapid dehydration of tissues by applying a source of energy or electric current. This causes destruction of that tissue, in this case, the tumors of NF. However, the process produces a small wound that will eventually leave a small scar. That's all well and good for the smaller tumors, but what do you do if the tumors are bigger? Using electrodesiccation for larger tumors will result in larger scars. Sometimes these scars can appear worse than the tumor that was destroyed. So applying this technique to every tumor that someone with NF will have is not a great idea. In reality, to remove hundreds of skin tumors simultaneously, we have to use different techniques to get us the best results. This includes not only making the trade-off for a scar a good one, but to make sure that tumors do not return. What is known widely as electrodesiccation for NF1 is actually more than simply electrodesiccation by itself. There is a component of traditional surgical excision or tumor removal using a standard incision. What this means is that there will be some tumors we can remove with electrodesiccation and others that will need to be cut out and stitched. In practice, there's usually more cutting out than there is actual electrodesiccation. This ultimately gives us better scars and a longer lasting result. It's important to note that this procedure does not mean that we stop the progression of NF. It only means that we are able to achieve relief of symptoms at any given point in time. New tumors will continue to form. As far as recurrence of tumors, this only happens if there is a small active remnant left behind. Most of the time, tumors that are removed never come back. However, new tumors can form in the immediate vicinity of a tumor that was removed, making it look like there is possibly a recurrence. The process of removing a large number of skin or cutaneous tumors of neurofibromatosis is usually regulated by time. This is because most patients usually have hundreds to even thousands of tumors, which would require a large amount of time to completely remove. However, there is a bigger problem than investing the time in removing the tumors. Specifically, the more tumors that are removed, the more injury the body sustains. As a result, the healing process can be slowed, which can ultimately result in symptoms of severe fatigue and poor scar healing. The 
wounds can also linger longer as the body tries to consume nutrients and calories for the healing process. In order to balance the process of removing as many tumors as possible with predictable postoperative healing, I will often recommend the surgery be limited to a three to four hour window. We are still able to remove several hundred tumors in this time span without overwhelming the body's healing response. Since we are typically not treating the entire body during this length of time, most patients will require more than one round of treatment to completely address the tumors from head to toe. This is still better than trying to take off too many in a single surgery. Post-operative recovery is much quicker and the scars typically heal better. So how many tumors or areas can we treat in one session of tumor removal? When consulting with patients, I always wanna know what the priority areas are. These are not always the same for every patient. For example, many patients would like to have exposed areas treated such as the face, neck, and hands. Others may express an interest in removing uncomfortable and painful tumors from the back. I typically like to address these problem areas first and to do so in a thorough fashion. It is always best to completely treat an area before jumping to another area. This gives better resolution of symptoms and an overall better appearance. Healing after electrodesiccation is relatively straightforward. Often, the procedure has very little pain or discomfort. Patients can have some postoperative itching that might last several days, but pain is relatively well tolerated early on. The risk of infection is very low and has not occurred in my experience after these procedures. Instructions for taking care of the wounds are also quite simple. Immediately after surgery, a topical antibiotic ointment is applied. Patients will then continue to reapply this up to two days after surgery. At that point, they are instructed to switch over to a hypoallergenic moisturizing cream and apply sunblock whenever outdoors. Showering begins after the first post-operative day in order to keep all the wounds and incisions clean. I always encourage a well-rounded diet that is high in protein and complex carbohydrates to quickly heal the wounds. Most of the wounds will then be fully healed between one and two weeks after surgery. These originally begin as small scab covered wounds which will then flake off to reveal a healed scar. The scar will then remain pink or even sometimes purplish for up to six months. The final appearance of the scars are typically a flat white spot or freckle. It's also important to know that scars have a specific cycle of healing. In the beginning, the scar is disorganized and sometimes quite thick. Some patients think that the tumor has returned at this point. However, this is normal scar healing. Over the next several months, the scar will start to soften and settle to a flatter contour. The final appearance of the skin is not always completely flat, but may have a slight irregular texture that is still a massive improvement over the multitude of bumps. There are no strict guidelines as to how frequently surgery must be performed to remove these tumors. In general, I'd like to give at least three months for healing to take place before moving on to a new section. This gives patients enough time to recover and to heal sufficiently with their scars to determine if any areas may need to be retreated while turning our focus to new areas as well. Of course, there is no particular disadvantage to waiting longer. However, because it is the nature of these tumors to continue growing over time, I will often recommend a more thorough treatment at an earlier stage of tumor growth. And this way, tumors are dealt with more completely when they are small and the scars themselves will be much more tolerable. In addition, a larger territory can be covered with any one procedure. This also means that surgical removal of these tumors should not wait until tumors have substantially grown in size or number. Unfortunately, many patients are given the advice to wait until symptoms are either intolerable or the tumors are just too big. These recommendations often disadvantage patients more than they help them. There is no reason to allow tumors to grow in size before seeking treatment. A person's quality of life can be hugely impacted if treatment is started early and maintained throughout their lives. In recent months, MEK inhibitors have shown promise in the control of tumor growth related to type 1 neurofibromatosis. This is a huge step in the lifetime prognosis of people with this condition. However, treatment protocols have yet to be determined in an effective manner to identify patients who will benefit the most. Questions such as, when should treatment start? How long should treatment continue? And do tumors resume their growth once treatment is discontinued? All need to be answered. In addition, although side effects have been reported as being mild, it is difficult to ubiquitously recommend this to all patients at this point. What may be a mild side effect to one patient may be severe to another. This is why surgery will likely remain the primary method of control of tumor growth for now. Hopefully with further research and development, the origin of NF1 can be interrupted at the genetic level 
early in human development. In summary, electrodesiccation for NF1 is not exactly a reliable treatment on its own for the majority of patients. In its purest form, electrodesiccation is only reserved for the very smallest skin tumors that are perhaps less than three millimeters in diameter or thereabouts. Now that's pretty small. However, it cannot be used for tumors that are much larger without leaving behind a pretty substantial scar or possibly even remnants of tumor that can then grow. In practice, the process of removing hundreds of skin tumors involves more than one way of doing it. Tumors must also be removed in a traditional excision approach to make sure that they do not return and that the resulting scars are favorable over the tumors they replace. Of course, this is a more labor-intensive process that may result in fewer tumors being removed during one session of surgery. However, my philosophy is that the optimal outcome of improved skin and scar quality overrides the absolute necessity of removing as many tumors as possible. In reality, hundreds of tumors can still be removed in a favorable way with dedication and commitment. If you're new to the channel, welcome and join us by hitting the like and subscribe buttons to get the most complete and well-organized experience in all things plastic surgery. And if you need to come see me, go to drpanosian.com and complete the contact form or pick up a phone and call us directly. Thanks for watching and see you next time.